what I would like you guys to, to, know, to know, the key thing, the key thing is that if you are told that the temperature rises to, right? Well, they say the temperature rises by, we'll talk about that, or they say the temperature rises with, or they can say the change in temperature right so i want us to talk about this so that you don't get confused because even if you know how you know the equation they can try to confuse you when they give you the um the the, the temperatures right so when they say the temperature rises to you must know that this is the final temperature t t2 the temperature rises to so that is the final temperature T2, right? Now, if they say the temperature rises by, this is the change in temperature, right? They say the temperature rises with, this is also the change in temperature. Now, the change in temperature, you know, this is the change in temperature. So it speaks by itself. So you can see them. So these are the key things. These are the things that you need to check. So even when you're dealing with linear expansion, right? Because you'll be given the final length, the initial length, and the, uh, uh, the change in length. So you must know which one is which. Initial, term, uh, initial length, final length, or the change in length. So this is important. If you know this and you know the equation to apply, and you won't have a, you know, you won't have problems right there, right? So, uh, oh, on our next video, we'll be uh, performing calculations, right? On um, applying these equations that I've, I've just introduced, uh, calculating the heat energy lost or the heat energy gained by a, a, a substance, right? <coughs> right. So, another thing that I will. Right, so uh, right now, I would like us to talk about efficiency. 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 So I will try to uh, break it down so that you guys understand what is efficiency, right? So let's have an example. Uh, let's say maybe you have an individual um, who owns an energy of 200 joules let's just say this is a person we're making an example and trying to explain efficiency so on a normal state on a normal state so what it means you are not sick you are you are you're hundred percent okay you don't have problems. So we know that the energy that you own is 200 joules. So this is your total energy, the total energy that you own. If you have to give it out, if you have to give all your energy, this is what you will give, right? 200 joules, right? So if you have to give it out, obviously, Okay, before we talk about that, this energy that you own, the normal, the energy that you own, we call it the input energy, right? Input energy, right? So if let's say, for example, you want to push a body or any object, right? When you are 
on your normal state, you can produce this amount of energy because you feel strong, right? So you can give it out to try and push the, the object. So you can give this amount of energy, give it all because you've got strength. You don't have problems right there. So you can give it as output to push what? A body or an object, right? It will be easy for you to do that, easy. If the object is too big, you produce all your energy to try and push it, right? To overcome friction. So, but now, if you are seeing, we know very well that you, you own this amount of energy, 200 joules. But because today you are sick, we have the same block or the same body, same mass. Let's say maybe here it was 20 kgs. Even this one is still 20 kgs. It's still you, the same person who owns the same 200 joules, right? It's an example. So now, you are trying to push this body of 20 kg. But now you find that you only produce 50 joules as output. So this is your, your input. This is your output. So remember, this is not practical. This is an example. Right, so you produce 50 joules. But we know that the energy that you actually own is uh, 200 joules. But why is it that today you are producing 50 joules? What is the problem with this person? Today, this person is not effective enough to produce 200. What, have, what might have happened? When we check, we find that you are sick. That's why you are having a problem. That's why you are not effective. So, on this one here, we can see that you are operating at 100%. You are 100% effective. Therefore, the efficiency, 100%. Right. So the efficiency is 100% when the input energy is equal to the output energy. If you can give out everything you own, then we say you are 100% effective. The efficiency is 100%. So but now you are giving 50%, but we know very well that you own 200. What happened to the 150? Huh? The 150 joules. So the 150 joules is energy lost. So the 150 loss, sorry, the 150 joules is energy that has been lost. Because we know that the energy that has reached the object is 50 joules. Right? So it means that the 150 is lost, right? So we can calculate the efficiency of this person, right? Now, the efficiency will then represent the percentage of the output. So when we talk about efficiency, we're talking about what? The percentage that has been given out. So we can determine this percentage, right? So. This is what we are going to do. We say the efficiency is equal to the energy out divided by the energy, the energy in. Now, this is equal to out is 50. So it will be 50 divided by 200 because 200 is in. So you will have that. So if you are going, if you use your calculator here, This will be 1 divided by 5 divided by 20, 1 divided by 4, which is 0, 0,25. Right? So right, I hope I'm right there. So this equation is actually multiplied by 100. So that you don't have that in units, you have it in percentage. So this will be equal to 100. 
So this will give us, uh, if I look at it, it will be 25%. So it means that this person is actually 25% effective. So the 50 joule is actually 25% of 200 joules, right? So the efficiency can be, can be calculated if you have the input and the output. So it's just a ratio between the two. All right, let's meet on the next video where we are going to talk about power and also couple everything with efficiency. Uh, Thank you.